Number 6. The Crew of the Sarah Joe The Sarah Joe was a 17-foot motorboat that at the time 20-something-year-old Robert Malakini acquired in the 1970s. He named it after his mom Sarah and dad Joe. The boat took five strong, healthy young men out to sea 40 years ago, and it wasn't until more than a decade later that their boat was found on the shores of one of the smallest of the Marshall Islands. But the men were not with the boat. Oddly enough, there was a shallow grave that contained the bones of one of the fishermen, but no other clues or signs of life. To make their disappearance stranger, oceanographers estimated that it would have only taken the boat about three months to drift onto the island, which means the boat, grave, or remaining crew should have been there when a government survey of the island took place in 1983, but they weren't. So we may never actually know what happened to the Sarah Joe and her crew for the four years between the disappearance and the survey of the island. Number 5. The Missing Lighthouse Keepers There was once an isolated island off the coast of Scotland where three lighthouse keepers lived and were responsible for keeping the building intact. One day when their monthly supply ship dropped in, the island was silent, no response from the lighthouse keepers. Eventually the captain and some crew members went to investigate and found the suspiciously empty lighthouse. Two of the three waterproof coats were missing from their hangars and the kitchen was left in a state as if people left in a hurry. The lighthouse log only added one mystery to the situation. The log described how one of the keepers wouldn't talk, and the other continuously cried for hours. All of this pain and fear seemed to be coming from what was referred to as a powerful storm looming in the distance. However, this begs the question, why were they so scared of a simple storm? They should have been safe in the brand new lighthouse, right? The log goes on to talk about how they all sat close together and prayed for the storm to be over. The final log states the storm has passed, the skies are calm, and God is over all. Their bodies were never found, and the cause of their deaths are still a mystery to this day. The most accepted theory is that they somehow got swept out to sea during the storm, never to be seen again. But one final detail remains, one that scared the captain and his crew to the bone. The powerful storm described in the log didn't exist. There were no storms reported in the area. In fact, the skies were calm all day. Number 4. The Death of Chris Kremers and Lysanne Froon Both girls went on a study abroad trip to Panama, where they went missing on a hike. After several weeks, some of their remains were found miles up the river from where they began their hike, along with a backpack that contained their belongings. The creepy part of it is that a camera in their backpack started out with pictures that they took of each other hiking, and then suddenly goes into over 100 pictures of what appeared to be nighttime pictures of rocks near a riverbed, the back of someone's head, and just pure blackness. The dark pictures appear to be taken many days after they went missing. There's a lot of theories as to why they went missing, what finally ended their lives, and why they were taking pictures, but there's no solid answer. According to their cell phone use records, they had been alive in the forest for days after they got lost, trying to get a signal from their phones to call emergency help. Number 3. The Death of Kendrick Johnson Kendrick Johnson was found rolled up in wrestling mats in Lowndes High School and his death was ruled an accident. The official story is that he was reaching into the rolled up wrestling mats to get his shoe and got stuck and died. An initial autopsy concluded that the death was accidental and Johnson's family wasn't happy with that, so they had an independent autopsy performed. This second autopsy showed that he died from blunt force trauma and there's actually blood in many of the crime scene photos. People believe the conspiracy between the school and police is keeping a lot of information from the family. Video footage from the gym during the time of his death is missing, which makes this mystery all the more unsettling. Number 2. The Disappearance of Amy Lynn Bradley Amy was an American citizen who went missing during a Caribbean cruise on the Royal Caribbean Rhapsody of the Seas. On the morning of March 24, 1998, Amy had been drinking in the dance club with the ship's band Blue Orchid. One of the band's members, Alistair Douglas, known as Yellow, said he parted with Amy at about 1 a.m. Sometime between 5.15 and 5.30, Amy's father Ron saw her asleep on the deck. When he got up at 6 a.m., she was no longer there. There were possible sightings of Amy in Curaçao in 1998 and 1999. Two Canadian tourists reported seeing a woman resembling Amy on the beach in 1998. The woman's tattoos were allegedly identical to Amy's. A member of the Navy said he saw Amy in a brothel in 1999, and he claimed she told him that her name was Amy Bradley and that she begged him for help. There was another potential sighting in 2005, 
when the witness claimed she was seen in a department store restroom in Barbados. Amy's mother and father appeared on an episode of Dr. Phil. An image of a young woman resembling Amy that was emailed to her parents was shown on the show, and it suggests that she may have been sold into sex slavery. And number one, the disappearance of Kenny Veach. Kenny Veach was a well-experienced hiker in Nevada who found a cave he described as the M Cave, as it was opened in the shape of an M. He claimed he heard very unusual noises from the cave and found it suspicious, as it was located six miles south of a top-secret airbase. As he began to enter the cave, he claimed his whole body began to vibrate. The more he went into the cave, the worse the vibrating became. He said he suddenly became very afraid and hightailed it out of there. He recorded another trip to find the cave again and catch it on video, but this video ended up being a bust. He later went back to where he found the cave again and has not been seen since. His phone was found in an abandoned mine entrance, but no body or evidence that he had gone down into the mine. He posted this video about the cave a few days before he went missing. And uh, I'm looking for a cave that I, I found and I didn't, have a, I didn't have a sidearm when I was here before and something about that cave just spooked me out of all the caves I've ever gone in. This one just made my body vibrate. The closer I got to it, the crazier my body felt and I was like, all right, I'm not going to go in there right now, but I'm coming back someday. And I talked to some people on YouTube and I told them, hey, I'm coming out here, you know, because they, they kind of called my hand on it. So I don't know if there's going to be anything to it, but it, it might be interesting. Uh, if I can find it, I got to relocate it. And this is a big mountain range I'm in and uh, I'm not, I'm on foot, you know, my truck's way out there. There's no roads, there's no trails. It's a pretty rough terrain. So uh, hopefully I'll find it. It's shaped like a big M. It's a big cave that looks just like a gigantic M.